and welcome to another tutorial uh, for the purposes of the Edexcel Further Pure 1 course. Now in this tutorial I'm going to teach you about the factor theorem. Now I'm doing this because some of you are doing FP1 without having done uh, Core 1 and Core 2 so the factor theorem is something we're going to need in the complex number chapter. So it's a mini tutorial here to help you be able to do my next video on complex numbers. Okay, what is the factor theorem about? Well, the factor theorem says the following. It says, if you take a polynomial, and I might call it f of x. Now, a polynomial is uh, an expression uh, a po uh, that has powers of x in it. So, for example, x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 3. That's an example of a polynomial. It's a cubic because the highest power of x is x cubed. Take another one, something like x squared plus 4. That's a polynomial. It's got x's in it, but the highest power is 2, so it's a quadratic. And they're examples of polynomials. Now, if we can find, the factor theorem says the following, if we can find a number, and I'm calling it a, but it's a number, so that when you substitute a in for x in your polynomial, you get the answer 0, then you know that x minus a is a factor of the polynomial. So if you can find a number that makes the polynomial 0, x minus that number is a factor. And the factor theorem also goes the other way. It says if you can show that x subtract a number is a factor, then if you put that number into the polynomial, you will get the answer 0. Now, I want, I want to show you both ways with two examples here. Let's go the first way around. If I can find a number that makes this polynomial 0, I know x minus that number is a factor. Now, I'm going to try, for example, say I tried various numbers and I eventually got to the number 3. And I work out that f of 3 is 9 minus 21 plus 12, substituting in 3 in here, and that's 0. And this tells me that x minus 3 is a factor. Okay, that's what the factor theorem tells me. Say I keep going and try various other numbers and I eventually get to the realisation that f of 4 helps me out here. f of 4 is 16, take away 28 plus 12 and that again is 0. So I know that x minus 4 is a factor. Okay, so that's what the factor theorem told us. So we can summarise f of x it, it's got it's a, a quadratic, so it has two factors at most. f of x is equal to this thing here, but it also must equal the two factors times together, x minus 3, x minus 4. Now, we know that's right because from our GCSE knowledge, we can factorise something like this easily. But here, we're using the factor theorem. We're substituting numbers in until we find what number makes the uh, polynomial 0. Then we'll know that x minus that number is a factor. Okay. Now, let's go the other way around. Here is a polynomial. Now, from my GCSE knowledge, I know that factorises to x minus 3, x minus 4. I know that. So, because I know this is a factor, I know that f of 3 must be 0. I can say that. I don't have to work it out. I know it's 0 because x minus 3 is a factor. And similarly, because x minus 4 is a factor, I know that f of 4 gives me the answer 0. And using the factor theorem both way rounds is going to help us um, answer questions later in the complex number chapter. OK, I want to show a few better examples where the factor theorem is useful. Here's an example of how we could use the factor theorem. Now, in the previous example I did quadratics. We all know how to factorise quadratics. But why not let's use the factor theorem to factorise a cubic and show us how helpful it can be. So the question is, factorise the following. Now, the first thing I always do is I call the thing I'm trying to factorise, the expression, f of x, or some sort of polynomial. You can call it a, a p of x or q of x, but I'm going to call it f of x, is equal to 6x squared, so x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x subtract 10. Now, I'm going to try and use the factor theorem to find a factor. I'm going to try various values uh, for, one, for x here. I'm going to say, you know what, let's try and work out f of 1 and see what we get. Well, we get 1 cubed, which is 1, 
we get 6 times 1 squared, which is 6. We get 3 times 1, which is 3, and we'd have the subtract 10. Now, luckily, by my first choice, this actually is 0. So I know that when I put 1 into this polynomial, I get 0. f of 1 is 0. So I'm, I know, therefore, that x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial. So I can say, I can start factorising now, I can say this is the thing I'm trying to factorise, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 10, that should be an x there, I know that x minus 1 is a factor. Now what I could do, I could keep trying um, di different numbers and see if I can find the other factors, but I can do a bit of algebra here. I can actually help myself out with a bit of algebra. That's a factor. It must have another bracket multiplying by it to get this polynomial on this side. Now the question is, I want an x cubed. What needs to go here so that when I multiply by that x, I get an x cubed? Well, it's got to be x squared, hasn't it? And that would multiply to give me the x cubed I want, and I'm done, and I've fixed it. But it, at the same time as giving me the x cubed, it creates for me a subtract x squared. So it creates for me a negative x squared. Now I want 6x squared, not negative x squared. So to fix it, I know I'm going to have to add a 7x squared to fix it. So that must mean here, How do what do I need here to multiply by that x to give me the 7x squared? Well, I'm going to need 7x, aren't I? And that gives me the 7x squared I want, but unfortunately creates for me a negative 7x. So it creates for me a negative 7x. Now I want positive 3x. I don't want negative 7x, so I'm going to have to add 10x. What do I need here to multiply by that x to give me the add 10x I want? It's going to be 10. And that gives me the 10x I want. And at the same time, it gives me negative 10. But that's what I wanted over here. And so I have wrote, written in what should be left over in this bracket. And now I can actually factorise that because it's a quadratic. I know how to factorise something like that. Two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to uh, 7 it must be x plus 2, x plus 5. And hey presto, I have factorised, and Rob that working out, you leave your working in in the exam, but I just want to show you, I have factorised this into three linear factors. <clears throat> Now, just to know, we could have kept looking for numbers here to find f of minus 2 would have given me 0 because x uh, plus 2 is a factor, and f of minus 5 would have given me uh, 0 because x plus 5 is a factor. But I could have done it algebraically. It seems a bit neater to do it that way, and this is a skill you're going to need for uh, later on in call 1 and call 2 and heavily in FP1, so get familiar with this skill. Right, time for you to have an example. Pause the video, have a go, I'll go through the answers in one second, in ten seconds. Let's go. Okay, going through this, first things first, I'm going to call it f of x. I'm going to say f of x, I'm going to define it to be x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. And I'm going to try and use the factor theorem to get me my first factor. And I always try 1 and minus 1 because the examiner is quite kind. I try 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2. Hopefully it's one of these. Put f of 1 in. You get 1 plus 6 plus 11 plus 6. Right. That is not 0. So it's no help to me. So I'm going to try f of minus 1. Okay, I'd get minus 1 plus 6. Subtract 11 plus 6. Okay, and this here, minus 1, minus 11, minus 12, add the 6 and 6, I would get 0. So, I know that f of negative 1 is 0. So I know x plus 1 is a factor. So I know my first factor. I know this tells me that x subtract a 1, x subtract negative 1, i.e. x plus 1, is a factor by the factor theorem. So I'm going to write down what I'm trying to factorize. I'm trying to factorize x cubed plus 6x 
plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. And I know the first factor. The first factor I've already determined is x plus 1. Okay, let's do the let's try and find the second bracket with the method I just showed you previously. What needs going here? So when I multiply it by x, I get the x cubed. It's got to be x squared, hasn't it? And that gives me the x cubed I want, and I tick it off. It creates for me a plus x squared. Now, I don't want plus 1x squared. I want plus 6x squared. So I'm going to have to add a 5x squared here to make it right. So what do I need here to multiply by the x to give me the 5x squared? I need 5x, don't I? And that times that gives me the 5x squared I'm looking for. But it creates for me a 5x, a plus 5x. So it creates for me uh, a plus 5x. Okay? Now, I don't want 5x, I want 11x. So I'm going to have to add on a 6x. What needs going here? So when I multiply it by the x, I get plus 6x. Well, a 6. And look, that 6 times that 1 gives me the 6 I'm after, and everything is right. And so, therefore, to finish it off, that x plus 1 stays where it is, and we factorise this using our uh, normal methods in factorising quadratics. Two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5, x plus 2, x plus 3, and I'm done. I have factorised a cubic now using the factor theorem. Okay, let's just continue use the factor theorem for something else. I'm now going to use the factor theorem to, sh to find a cubic polynomial. I'm going to go backwards. I'm told in this example, and this is you should write this down, that I've got a cubic polynomial. That means it's got the highest power x cubed, some sort of x cubed in it. And it has roots 3, 2 and negative 1. And it asks me to state what the polynomial is. Well, by the factor theorem... If 3 is a root, x minus 3 is a factor. By the factor theorem, if 2 is a root, x minus 2 is a factor. By the factor theorem, if minus 1 is a root, x minus minus 1, i.e. x plus 1, is the third factor. Okay, so this polynomial, if I just multiply these three factors out, that will get me the polynomial from which had the roots 3, 2 and minus 1. So this is just a simple case of a bit of algebra here. Let's multiply the first two brackets out. Let's say I get x squared, subtract 5x plus 6, and here I have x plus 1. And then I multiply each term by each term here. That times that gives me x cubed. That times that gives me x squared. That times that gives me minus 5x squared. That times that gives me minus 5x. That times that gives me 6x. And that times that gives me 6. So tidying all up and adding it together, I would get x cubed minus 4x squared plus an x and plus a 6. And there is my cubic polynomial from which had the roots 3, 2 and minus 1. OK, a couple for you to do yourself. Pause the video, have a go. One's a quadratic, one's a cubic. Use this factor theorem to... Uh, to help you. Off you go, I'll go through in 10 seconds. Okay, find a quadratic with roots 3 and minus 2. Well, I know if 3 is a root, x minus 3 is a factor. I know if negative 2 is a root, then x plus 2 is a factor. Okay, multiplying that out, that gives me my quadratic polynomial. x squared minus x minus 6, done in one move. That has roots 3 and minus 2, simple. Cubic, ever so slightly more uh, tricky. Let's just, I'll just move this up a little bit so I've got a bit more space. Um, 4 is a root, so x minus 4 is a factor. Negative 2 is a root, so x plus 2 is a factor. Neg uh, 1 is a root, so x subtract 1 is a factor. Now it's just a game of multiplying this out. This times this will give me e the first two brackets, x squared, minus 2x minus 8, and then you have x minus 1 left over. Then multiply that out, and you get x cubed minus x squared. You get minus 2x squared plus 2x, and you get minus 8x plus 8. Add it all together, 
get x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. And you're done. You have found the cubic polynomial that has roots 4, negative 2 and 1. Now, hopefully you find that useful in learning about the factor theorem. This comes up in, uh, in your core 1 and core 2 exams and you'll use it throughout the rest of your A-levels. So hopefully you found that helpful. And now move on to my next complex number video which is going to use this throughout. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.